Right, so if Labour had a plant working at Tory HQ, they should run for party leader next, given they're clearly competent at something, because Sunak's manifesto launch has tanked from the get-go. Before you even consider what it contains, deciding to launch it at Silverstone Racecourse invited the prospect of another self-inflicted car crash, and with Bart Pitt apparently filming nearby, Sunak kept putting movie references in everywhere he could. The one thing about tax rises is you don't talk about tax rises, possibly not the winning soundbite he might have thought it was. But ahead of the launch, Keir Starmer was asked for his view, not that he was ever going to praise the manifesto, but what he actually said has got people absolutely raging across social media. We'll almost certainly lose him even more votes, and actually had nothing to do with Rishi Sunak whatsoever. Right, so Rishi Sunak's election manifesto launch absolutely bombed, and the fact the manifesto logo reading clear plan, bold action, secure future looked like three missiles taken to the air didn't help alleviate that imagery either. There is no bold plan, just more cuts and being levied most heavily on the backs of the disabled, welfare set to take an absolute hammering once again under the Tories, so he could pay for the tax cuts he's been desperate to shoehorn in, desperate for a positive line. Two pence off national insurance, tax breaks for the Tory base of pensioners, and garbage about seizing the benefits of Brexit when there have been none. It's been a total cack-handed disaster that has driven the cost of living upwards far more than any other factor we've faced in the last several years, which have included an energy crisis driven by privatisation more than Putin, despite the fact it's all Russia's fault, and a literal pandemic. The attack on welfare to pay for this bothers me more than anything else, and not just because I happen to be an unpaid carer and I know a thing or two about social security and living on it, but because for all of Sunak's projection about securing the future, this doesn't do that. You might sneer at social security, you might be taken in by arguments of a something-for-nothing culture, that these people are shirkers rather than workers and they're just lazy and need a boot up the backside, or actually you might be more sympathetic and see through the rhetoric. But any of us factually could fall seriously ill in our lifetimes. Any of us could be in an accident tomorrow, leaving us with life-changing injuries. And you would hope in a properly civilised society that that safety net would be there for you. That this isn't people like that that the Tories are going after. But I'm afraid to say it very much is. A secure future is therefore, when you look at it this way, absolutely not what Sunak is proposing here. It's been a last-minute rush job to cobble together something of a manifesto, anything to try and save him from overseeing what is potentially an extinction-level event for the Tories, and this, frankly, isn't it. We know the Tories are finished. We know they are done, and when it was put to Keir Starmer to comment on this, he did, of course, relish the opportunity to do so. But he might have done so a little too much. And in line with that viewpoint, have a watch of this little montage I've put together and see how Starmer might have just gone too far in his gloating and actually done himself no favours when he was gifted this open goal to attack Sunak. Jeremy Corbyn made our party the party of anti-austerity and he was right to do so. The party that would fight cuts to public services. He made us the party that wanted to invest more heavily in our public services and he was right to do so. And we must retain that. We build on that. We don't trash it as we go forward. We should treat, if you like, the 2017 manifesto as our foundational document. The radicalism and the hope that that inspired across the country was real. Can you guarantee that under your leadership, the 2019 Labour commitments to nationalise water, energy, rail, the Royal Mail, they'll all be in Labour's next election manifesto. I've made that commitment. Um, so obviously in the Labour Party manifestos for the 2017 and 2019 general elections, there are pledges to abolish tuition fees for students. If you became party leader, would you argue for this to be put into the manifesto in the next election? I would. I think it was a very important um, manifesto commitment. So here we are at Houston Station, just about seven o'clock in the morning, about to get a train to meet the rest of the Shadow Cabinet and Jeremy Corbyn in Birmingham to launch our manifesto. I think in this election, what I'm hearing is people are really want change. They want to end the inequality that they see. They, they just want decency um, and dignity. And that's what this manifesto is about. Real change, ambitious change, and ambition to meet the needs. Please have a read of it and vote Labour. The Conservatives are going to pledge another 2p off national insurance. If you get into power, will you match it? 
the, the money's not there for the, door, the Tories' desperation. Um, and what they're producing is a recipe for five more years of chaos. And I think that's why it's so important that we see this election as a choice, because we can't go on like this. We need to turn the page, rebuild, start with Labour. We, we've got six first steps that are ready to go on July the 5th. Get on with the job, roll our sleeves up. So that's the choice before the country now. So just to follow up on that, they say um, that you will be putting up taxes, uh, not cutting them. Is that correct? No tax cuts from you? We have been absolutely clear that all our plans are fully costed, fully funded. Uh, we will not be increasing income tax, national insurance or VAT, so no tax increases for working people. None of our plans require tax rises. But this is coming from the party that's put tax to the highest level since, you know, for 70 years. And they're building this sort of Jeremy Corbyn style manifesto where anything you want can go in it. Uh, none of it is costed. Um, it's a recipe for more of the same. And that's why this choice of turn our back on this, turn the page and rebuild with Labour is so important. We've got six first steps. We're ready to go uh, on July the 5th. Keir Starmer isn't just a brazen liar. He's a grinning idiot with it. There is dishonesty laid bare. The manifestos of 2017 and 2019 that he campaigned on, that he said he was committed to, he's now directly compared to the Tories' weak and rushed offering to the country. They can turn around now and point to that and point to Starmer and say to people, how can you trust a man who is comparing our manifesto to the two Corbyn manifestos in order to trash ours when he actively campaigned for those policies, for those manifestos? I know Boris Johnson wasn't all that long ago, but is Starmer not clearly the most duplicitous, lying, snake going in recent politics? I genuinely cannot remember a guy so brazen in his dishonesty when surely to God he must know his every word in this era of social media is captured and there to remind him with. Or does he really think the country are so stupid as to not remember, not notice the reminders or not care, thinking it's a done deal and he's going to be the next PM? The manifestos he's referring to now as being uncosted and that anything can go in it, he once referred to as the blueprint, as the foundational document of his Labour Party as he took it forward. Not only was it not uncosted, for the first time a manifesto had actually been costed. John MacDonald, the then shadow chancellor, established that precedent and 163 globally renowned economists also backed it. Now he's putting as much distance as he can between him and it because now his true Tory colours are being exposed. The uncosted bit is just heinous, because it is an out-and-out -out lie. Alongside both manifestos was what was called the Grey Book. This is what John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor of the day, produced at the time, which showed all the costings. As much as you could look at the policies, you could see exactly how they were going to be paid for, where this money was going to be raised from, taxes being raised on the rich, spending which would... In return investments, investing in ordinary people who spend in the economy and then strengthen it, help it to grow, making money work for us and not just disappearing offshore where it does nothing to drive the economy at all, but is completely lost from it instead. What those Corbyn manifestos contained are policies that not only remain massively popular, but were also things Starmer once promised himself only to tear them up later. The man standing for nothing except what he thinks will win him votes from one moment to the next, which will win him donors more importantly even than that. A dangerous charlatan who believes in nothing except power for the sake of it and how to get it. If these policies were uncosted, if they were promises of things that could not be delivered, then why did he campaign for it? That is a question that should now haunt him for the rest of the election campaign. Because not only has he left himself wide open to Tory ridicule and attack on that, which can and will no doubt be used to take the heat off them, but will also drive many more would-be Labour voters off in droves, who will feel horrified and insulted at this two-faced, grinning example of imbecilic enthusiasms just dreaming about the curtains he plans to put up in number 10. People will rightfully also be asking themselves, was he lying back then or lying now? Because he's clearly lying to them somewhere. And why would you want to vote for someone who has, or is, demonstrably lying to you, either before or is now. If the Tories were actually planning a Corbyn-style manifesto, my goodness me, they'd be the ones actually worth voting for, in which case wouldn't they? But of course they aren't. That is ridiculous. They do not stand for such things. It is just a measure of Starmer's pure nastiness 
and the very obvious fact that there is no more than a Rizla paper between Starmer's Labour and the Tories that both now see attacking Corbyn as electorally advantageous. It isn't. It just shows they are both one as bad as each other. And this is a rather reminder of that. If you want change, do not vote for either of them. Meanwhile, as if Starmer wasn't rancid enough to get on your last nerve here, you'll love to hear all about the right-wing pro-Israel former chair of the Board of Deputies of British Jews, another long-time Corbyn basher, having now joined Starmer's Labour. Absolutely loving what Starmer is doing to it, it seems. And definitely of a view that Israel's support is not going to end with him in charge of the country, as if that's something we didn't know already. You can find out all about that story in this video recommendation here, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.